G'day guys, welcome to Cardboard Craving. Today we're going to have a look at some new Dominaria stuff. As you can see in front of you there, in the hit cam, we have the promo card. It is the Fire Song and Sun Speaker. Legendary creature, Minotaur Cleric. <coughs> six mana for 4-6. Red instant and sorcery spells you control have life link. Whenever a white instant or sorcery spell causes you to gain life, Fire Song and Sun Speaker deal with 3 damage to target creature or player. And that is the promo card. Nice looking card, I reckon. So, let's have a look at the rest of the stuff. Alright, let's get it done. We're going to skip through all the commons, because that's not what we want to see. So, commons, we'll just kick those out to the side and we'll have a look through the uncommons. One thing I have to say about um, this cardboard, it does feel like they've used better cardboard, from what I can tell. Alright. Imbolus's Clutches. Legendary Enchantment Aura. Enchant Permanent, you control Enchanted Permanent, and Enchanted Permanent is Legendary. Six mana. Not too bad. Goblin Barrage. Kicker, sacrifice an artifact or goblin. Costs four mana. And um, Goblin Barrage deals four damage to target creature. If this spell was kicked, it also deals four damage to target player or planeswalker. There we go, there's the rare. So, this one, the format is a little bit different. You have your 10 commons 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Then you'll have two uncommons, you have your rare, and then you'll have your legendary, followed by your land and your token. <clears throat> so, we have Sahili, Voice of Plenty. Now, that is a fairly good card. Um, four mana for a three four flying. You planeswalkers you control and other creatures you control have hexproof. For six mana, which is two green and four, put a one one counter on each creature you control. Now for four mana for the three four with flying, that's not too bad. Um, gives your creatures hexproof, so that's all right. Um, the 1-1 one, one counter on each creature control is a bit heavy, but um, all in all, I think it's not too bad. It's not too bad at all. So we'll pop that one in the pile just there. You can see that would be the rares pile just here. And Rona, Disciple of Gix. Now, for one black, one blue and one, when Rona, Disciple of Geeks, enters the battlefield, you may exile target historic card from your graveyard. You may cast non-land cards exiled with Rona. Um, for four mana, tap it, exile the top card of your library. So that's not too bad. And land, and the token. Okay, so, better look at those couple of, um, couple of uncommons so now basically we'll skip everything we'll just get straight to the rares um, if I see anything that that's like a big dollar uncommon then we will maybe have a crack we'll have a read which would probably just be dampening sphere um, and then yeah we'll just go straight to the gravy straight to the gravy
Cliff Top Retreat. Cliff Top Retreat enters the battlefield tapped unless you control a mountain or a plains. Mountain or a plains. Yeah, yeah. Arvard the Cursed. Legendary creature, vampire knight. One black, one white, and three. Death Touch, Life Link, and other legendary creatures you control get plus two, plus two. That's a three, three creature. I think that's alright. I'll, I'll put that in my um, white and black deck. Siege Gang Commander. Siege Gang Commander. Two red and three for a 2 2 goblin. When Siege Gang Commander enters the battlefield, create three 1 1 red goblin creature tokens. And one red and one of any sacrifice a goblin siege gang commander deals two damage to any target creature, or to any target. Sorry, got two two. It's not too bad. And Vlin Voda, the Rising Deep. That is eight mana kicker of one blue and one. And when Sl Slin Voda, the Rising Deep, enters the battlefield, if it was kicked, return all creatures to their owners' hands except for Merfolk, Krakens, Leviathans, Octopuses, and Serpents. And it's 8-8. Eight, eight. So that's that's going to be hitting hard in the, the um, in the Merfolk deck because you're going to be able to wipe the opponent's board. There we go, we hit the Dampening Sphere. Dampening Sphere. If a land is tapped for two or more mana, it produces colorless instead of any other type and amount. Each spell and player casts costs one more to cast for each other spell that player has cast this turn. Belfarin Void. Belfarin Void. Traxos Scourge of Krug Trample 4 mana for a 7-7 seven, seven. Traxos Scourge of Krug enters the battlefield tapped and doesn't untap during your untap step Whenever you cast a historic spell, untap Traxos Okay, well, yeah Oh, another dampening sphere in the very next packet. And Lyra Dawnbringer. Five mana, two white and three. Legendary creature angel. Flying first strike and life link. Other angels you control get plus one plus one and have life link. The five five creature. I like that card. I would probably um, chuck that in my angel and elf deck, which is I know that's a bit um, bit of a weird combination, but that's also um, a fairly decent value card. It, about 13 bucks for that one. So I'm, I'm going to say that's our first hit of the, the box. And we're going to put that up on the stand here. Chuck that up there, front and center. So we can all see it. We have Sylvan Awakening. Until end of till your next turn, all lands you control become 2-2 elemental creatures with reach. Indestructible and haste. They're still lands for three mana. Sorcery. Not too bad, I reckon. It's one of those cards that you can chuck in pretty much any deck. Garner the Blood Flame. Legendary creature, human warrior. One red, one black, and three. That's flash for a 3 3 creature. When Garner the Blood Flame enters the battlefield, you return to your hand. All creature cards in your graveyard that were put there from anywhere this turn. Other creatures you control have haste. Nice. Spore Swarm. Gaze Blessing. Oh, what do we have here? We have Enchantment Saga. Rite of Belen Belzen Mock. As this saga enters and after the draw, after your draw phase step, 
Add a law counter. Sacrifice after step three. Create two zero one black cleric creature tokens. And then create a six six black demon creature token with flying, trample, and at the beginning of your upkeep, sacrifice another creature. If you can't, this creature deals six damage to you. Okay, so that's one of those downside cards at the end, but um, you're gonna get a big 6 6 creature, so yeah, I guess it's not too bad. I guess it's not too bad. Oh, it's only a dollar on the list anyway, so maybe people don't like the old downside. Ergoros, the empty one. 6 mana, 2 black and 4. 4 3 creature with flying. Whenever Ergos, Ergoros, the empty one, deals combat damage to a player, that player discards a card at random. If the player can't, you draw a card. And here we go. Your Moth's Vile Offering. 5 mana, 1 black and 4. Legendary Sorcery. Put up to one target creature or planeswalker card from your graveyard onto the battlefield under your control. Destroy up to one target creature or planeswalker. Exile, exile Yorgmoth's Vile Offering. Okay, not too bad. Foil Swamp. Yay, we love a good Foil Swamp. Okay, Raph Capuchin Ship Mage. One blue, one white, and two for a 3 3 human wizard. Flash flying. Uh, you may cast historic spells as though they had flash. Okay, it's pretty sweet. All right. Song of Freylise. We'll have a look at that one. Spore. <coughs> Spore crown Thalid. Song of Freylise. <clears throat> okay, step one and two. Until your next turn, creatures you control gain. Tap it, add one mana of any colour. And for number three, put a 1 1 counter on each creature you control. Those creatures gain Vigilance, Trample, and Indestructible until end of turn. Alright. Antiquities War. <clears throat> Look at the top five cards of your library. You may reveal an artifact card from among them and put it into your hand. Put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. Artifacts you control become artifact creatures with base power and toughness 5-5 five five until end of turn. Okay, not too bad. And what have we got here? Hala the Fire Fletcher. One green, one red, <clears throat> and one of any. It is a 3-3 Elf Archer with Trample. Whenever you cast a spell, if that spell was kicked, put a 1-1 counter on Halar, the Fire Fletcher. Then Halar deals damage equal to the number of 1-1 counters on it to each opponent. Alright, well that's pretty good. And you get those tokens, get the counters cranking out and just start doing some sweet damage. Oh, Mox Amber. There we go. Now that's a big ticket number, that one. $29.94. According to MTG Goldfish. So let's see why it's hitting that big ticket. Add one mana of any colour among legendary creatures and planeswalkers you control. For zero. Okay. That's pretty average for a Mox. Um, that's what they do. Zero mana, add the mana to your mana pool. Not too bad. Not too bad. That's the next mythic, second mythic. Uh, let's hit that. We'll put that on the um, spotlight, on the highlight reel. Alright, Tatyova, Benthic Druid. Legendary creature, Merfolk Druid. One blue, one green, and three for a 3-3. Three, three. Whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, you gain one life and draw a card. Alright, happy days. Okay, 
Why Feast Adept? <clears throat> Weight of Memory. Two Headed Giant. Two Headed Giant. Two Red and Two for a 4 4 Giant Warrior. Whenever Two Headed Giant attacks, flip two coins. If both coins come up heads, Two Headed Giant gains double strike until end of turn. If both coins come up tails, Two Headed Giant gains menace until end of turn. Okay, well you flip the coins and it's 50-50 chance of getting, you know, um, double strike or vigilance, uh, double strike or menace, sorry. So, yeah. Braid, Steward of Argive. Legendary creature, human soldier. Two white and two for a two four with vigilance. Creatures can't attack you or a planeswalker you control unless their controller pays one for each of those creatures. Okay, I reckon that's that's alright. That's some um you know, make them do a bit more work to get through. Goblin War Chief. Alright, goblin spells you cast cost one less. Goblins you control have haste. Hmm, nice. Reminds me a bit of the old, bit like the old um, Goblin King. The old Goblin King. A Sanctum Spirit, and here we go. Let's see if we can get an auto focus on that. There we go. <coughs> Joshi Vess, Lich Lord or Lich Knight. Two black and two. Legendary creature zombie knight four five kicker for the one black and five um, menace when jo <coughs> Joshi Vess Lich Knight enters the battlefield if it was kicked create eight two two black zombie knight creature tokens with menace. All right, well that's that's you know definitely going to help you out, but it's very heavy. Gonna need a lot of mana to get that out. Ah, Shana Sisei's Legacy. <coughs> or Shana. <coughs> it's uh, <coughs> one white and one green. It's a zero, zero for a legendary creature, human warrior. Shana Sisei's Legacy can't be the target of abilities or your opponent's control. Shana gets one plus one plus one for each creature you control. Nice. <clears throat> Thorn Elemental. Oh, this one did not have a legendary in it. But Squee the Immortal. Two red and one legendary creature goblin. Two one. You may cast Squee the Immortal from your graveyard or from exile. Nice. So I guess does that mean he never really dies? He just keeps coming back. How would you get rid of him? Remove him from the game somehow. Kazarov Sengia Pure Blood. It is seven. Mana, so two black and five with flying. It's a four four creature. Whenever a creature an opponent controls is dealt damage, put a plus one plus one counter on Kararov Sengir Pure Blood, and then it's got an ability of one red and three. Karazov Kazarov deals two damage to target creature. Okay, heavy casting cost. The four mana to do two damage, not too bad. Um, could have been a bit better, I think. Shizik. Spore Swarm. Sage of Latnam. And here we go. Tishar, Ancestors, Apostle. Tisha Ancestors Apostle, legendary creature, bird cleric, 2-2, two, two. Um, it's 4 mana, 1 white and 3, flying, 
Whenever you cast a historic spell, return target creature card with converted mana cost 3 or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. Artifacts, legendaries and sagas are historic. Nice. Khan's Temporal Sundering. Two blue and four. Legendary sorcery. Um, you may cast a legendary sorcery only if you control a legendary creature or planeswalker. Alright. Target player takes an extra turn after this one. Return up to one target non-land permanent to its owner's hand. Exile Khan's Temporal Sundering. Alright. Seven, six mana for another turn. I guess that's about where you need to be with this. Okay, Tiana, Ship's Caretaker. Five mana for a 3-3. Three, three. Legendary Creature, Angel Artificer, or Artificer. Flying first strike. Whenever an aura or equipment you control enters, it is put into the graveyard from the battlefield. You may return that card to its owner's hand at the beginning of your next step, or your the, of the next end step. Mishra's self replicator. That is like freaking danger right there. Mishra's self-replicator, 5 mana, for a 2-2 artifact creature, assembly worker. Whenever you cast a historic spell, you may pay 1. If you do, create a token that is a copy of Mishra's self-replicator. Well, it's going to have a million little 2-2 artifacts around the place. Tetsu, Tetsuko Yumezwa, Fugitive. Legendary creature, Human Rogue. One blue and one. Creatures you control with power, toughness, one or less can't be blocked. There's a one three. Human rogue. Elfham Druid, Spore Crown Thalid. Cabal Stronghold. Tap it, add one colorless, tap three. And tap it, add one black for each basic swamp you control. Now that's going to be fairly good, I think. If you're going to, if you want to try pump out some, say you got eight swamps, tap three of them, get an extra five, you're going to end up with 13 mana. Pump out some Eldrazi or some really big creature. It's going to be quite helpful, I think. Not a bad card, I don't think. Oh. This is Ancient Animus Foil Common. Oh, there we have a legendary creature hiding behind that one. Danitha Capuchin Paragon. One white and two for a 2 2 legendary creature. Human Knight. First Strike Vigilance and Lifelink. Aura and equipment spells you cast cost one less to cast. Oh, I think that's pretty sweet actually. Doesn't tap, does damage first, gives you life. The enchantments cost less, I mean, your auras cost less, your equipment cost less. Happy days, I reckon. That's a pretty good card for an uncommon. I'd be happy with that in my white deck. Dread Shade. Does that look alright? Get the focus happening a bit there. Dredge shade three black, three three. Tap one black, dread shade gets plus one plus one until end of turn. It's not too bad, pump it up, use that bloody card we just talked about that gives you the extra black mana and pump it up big time. Okay, Whisper Blood Liturgast, 
Mithril Geist. Uh, legendary creature, human cleric. Four mana, one black and three. Uh, for a 2-2. Two, two. Sacrifice two creatures. Return target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. Glorious Rebirth. One black, one white, and five. Legendary Sorcery. All legendary permanent cards from your graveyard to the battlefield. So, yeah. There's a lot of legendaries in this set, so that's going to be pretty helpful. It is quite a big, heavy casting cost. Another Fire Fletcher, already seen that one, so we'll just skip past that bugger. Triumph of Gerard. Okay. Put a 1 1 counter target, <clears throat> 1 1 counter on target creature you control with the greatest power. Target creature you control with the greatest power gains flying, first strike. Life link and till end of turn, and only cost two mana, so not too bad. Black Blade Reforged, two mana for a legendary artifact equipment. Equipped creature gets plus one plus one for each land you control. Equipped legendary creature is three, and equip a normal creature is seven. Nice. Shana's Sisei's Legacy. We've seen that one already as well. We'll so just shuffle on past it. The Eldest Reborn. Each opponent sacrifices a creature or a planeswalker. And then for two, each opponent discards a card. And then three, put target creature or planeswalker card from a graveyard onto the battlefield under your control. And it's five mana, one black and four. Jaya's Immobilating Inferno. Or Immolating Inferno. Legendary Sorcery. Two red and X. <clears throat> Jaya's Immolating Inferno deals X damage to each of up to three targets. Okay. That's a bit of a clean house, that one. Knock out some some nasty looking creatures. Valaduck, Keeper of the Flame. Or Valaduck, Keeper of the Flame. <clears throat> At the beginning of combat on your turn, for each aura and equipment attached to Valaduck, Keeper of the Flame, create a 3-1 red elemental creature token with Trample and Haste. Exile those tokens at the beginning of the next end step. The 3-2, three, the 3 mana. Oath of Teferi, or Tefri. One blue and one white and three. Legendary enchantment. When Oath of Teferi enters the battlefield, exile another target permanent you control. Return it to the battlefield under its owner's control at the beginning of the next end step. You may activate a loyalty, the loyalty activi <coughs> abilities of planeswalkers you control twice each turn rather than only once. Nice. So you can double up on all the planeswalker abilities, get to that ultimate ability a lot quicker, and um, do some damage. Not too bad. Definitely what you'd expect in a white and blue deck. Tiana Ship's Caretaker. I think that's probably the third time we've seen that one now. Zahid Jinn of the Lamp. Two blue and four. Legendary creature Jinn. Five six. And it is you may pay four mana, which is one blue and three, and tap an untapped artifact you control rather than pay this spell's mana cost. And it's flying. 
So, 6 mana. Not too bad. Decent ability. Let's see how we go. Torga. Feminine Incarnate. 8 mana. 2 black and 6. Legendary creature avatar for us. And he's at 7 6. As an <clears throat> additional cost to cast this spell, you may sacrifice any number of creatures. This spell costs two less to cast for each creature sacrificed this way. When Torga Feminine Incarnate enters the battlefield, up to one target player's life total becomes half their starting life total. Rounded down. Okay. So if you can get that out and they haven't lost any life yet, then they're going to be down on 10. So that's pretty good. Gilded Lotus. Add 3 mana of any one colour. 5 mana for an artifact. That's pretty good. Especially, you know, for your um for your commander decks and your multicolored decks. Drudge Sentinel. Foil common. Gwen Gwendy, Pride of the Femoreth. Legendary creature human knight. Four mana. One one three. Two two. It has double strike. Creatures you control with first strike have double strike. Okay, fairly good. Make the old first strike deck and put a few of her in there and you'd be going alright then, wouldn't you? Territorial Allosaurus. Territorial Allosaurus. Two green and two. Or a 5-5 five, five dinosaur. Kicker is one green and two. When Territorial <clears throat> Allosaurus enters the battlefield. If it was kicked, it fights another target creature. Pretty sweet. By five, four mana. It enters the battlefield. You can pick off whatever creature you want. As long as it's got less life. So, I'm happy with that. I think that's actually a pretty good card. I'd probably put four of those in your green deck. Put them in my beast deck, I think. Yagul, Glutton of Or... <coughs> Urborg. Legendary creature, Frog Spirit. And it's one black and four for a nine three. That's it. Just a standard creature. Beefy bugger. Chainer's Torment. Chainer's Torment deals two damage to each opponent and you gain two life. Create an XX Black Nightmare Horror Creature token where X is half your life total. Round it up, it deals X damage to you. And it's one black and three. For an enchantment saga. Four Bearer's Blade. Three mana for an artifact equipment. Equipped creature gets plus three plus zero and has vigilance and trample. Whenever equipped the creature dies, Attach four bearer blade, four bearer's blade to target creature you control. That's not too bad. Lose creature, bump it onto another one. Grun the Lonely King is six mana, two green on four for a five-five ape warrior. Three kicker. If Grun the Lonely King was kicked, it enters the battlefield with five plus one plus one counters on it. Whenever Grunt attacks alone, double its power and its toughness until the end of turn. So you kick it and it becomes a 10-10 and if it attacks alone it becomes a 20-20. That is just pretty crazy. Although it is going to cost you 10 mana to get it out. But that's just going to get that on the table and kick it. Just swing with him and nothing else and oh yeah. You're going to be doing some serious damage. Unless you get chump blocked by a 1-1 fairy. <laughs> oh, such is the way in Magic the Gathering. Isolated Chapel. Isolated Chapel enters the battlefield tapped unless you control planes or a swamp. 
I don't like it when I see these things. Sometimes they just annoy me. A rare card, no, it does give you mana. Fight with fire. Foil. Kicker, six. Fight with fire deals five damage to target creature. If this spell was kicked, it deals 10 damage divided as you choose among any number of targets instead. Nice. Adil <clears throat> Adel's Adelius? The Cinder Wind. Legendary creature, human wizard, 2-2. Two, two. It's one red, one blue, and one. It has flying and haste. Whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, wizard you control get plus one, plus one to end of turn. Nice. The Mending of Dominaria. Five mana. The Mending of Dominaria. Two green and three. Put the top two cards of your library into your graveyard and then you may return a creature card from the graveyard to your hand. Return all land cards from your graveyard to the battlefield, then shuffle your graveyard into your library. Alright. Danitha Capuchin Paragon. I think we've already seen that one. Three mana, two, two. First strike vigilance laughing. Auras and equipments cost one less. The Eldest Reborn. I do believe we've already seen this one. Knight of Grace. Seal away. Naban, Dean of Iteration. Two mana for a 2 1 human wizard. If a wizard entering the battlefield under your control causes a triggered ability of a permanent you control to trigger, that ability triggers an additional time. So any triggered abilities happen to us. Not bad. Little wizard dude. If you're gonna got lots of abilities in your deck, then <clears throat> that's the card to have. Marwin the new nurturer. Legendary creature elf druid, 3 mana, 1 green and 2, 1-1. One, one. Whenever another elf enters the battlefield under your control, put a 1-1 one, one counter on Marwen the Nurturer. Tap it, add an amount of green mana equal to Marwen's power. Now that's definitely for your tribal elf deck. Just get those tokens, get those 1-1 one, one counters. Time of Ice. Tap target creature and opponent controls. It doesn't untap during its controls untap step. Or for, <clears throat> for as long as you control Time of Ice. Return all tapped creatures to their owner's hands. And it's four mana, one, one blue and three. Oh, we got a sneak peek or something behind there. Sorcerer's Wand. Khan, Sion of Urza. That is what we've been waiting for, peeps. The card of the box. The card of the set. That is the epic. That is exactly what I wanted. Couldn't ask for more. That is the $40 super special. It's not foil, but I'm happy with that. We're going to put that up there on the highlight reel. Happy days. Spread that out a bit, so. Okay, Whisper Blood Liter <coughs> Literagist. Literagist. Fallen of the Throne. One, one, and five. Destroy all lands. Each player returns two land cards from their graveyard to the battlefield. Okay, get rid of everything, reset it, bring a couple back, slow the game down. Hopefully if you got more creatures than them you can get the upper hand. Not too bad. Arvad the Cursed. Five mana. One black, one white, and three. Death Touch and Life Link. Other legendary creatures you control get plus two, plus two. That's a three, three. I think we saw that one near the start. Not bad. And a knight. Everybody loves a knight. 
Daring Archaeologist. Daring Archaeologist. Four mana, one white and three. Three three human artificer or artificer. When Daring Archaeologist enters the battlefield, you may return target artifact card from your graveyard to your hand. Whenever you cast a historic spell, put a 1 1 counter on Daring Archaeologist. Okay. So I guess it works a bit like the, you know, the Infinity stuff or the Metal Crafts or whatever. Um, kind of like, but for instead of artifacts, it's for historic spells. So your artifacts, your legendaries, sagas. Not too bad. Human Wizard. Foil Common. Slimefoot the Stowaway. Slimefoot the Stowaway. One green, one black, and one for a 2 3 fungus. Whenever a sapling you control dies, Slimefoot the Stowaway deals one damage to each opponent and you gain one life. Four mana, create a 1 1 green sapling token creature. A Verdant Force. Three green or five. At the beginning of each upkeep, create a 1 1 sapling creature token. It's a 7 7 elemental. And the final card, Slin Voter, which we've already seen. So there we go, guys. There's a look at the Dominaria box. And um, three hits the Mox Amber, the Lyra Dawnbringer. And the Khan Scion of Urza. So let's have a recap. Let's have a look at this one. Looks pretty nice. Alright. No worries guys, that is the end of the box. So thanks for watching Cardboard Craving. And uh, get on down to your card shop and crack a pack for me. And we'll see you in the next video. I'm